Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Atmosera. Today we're going to be taking a look at Spring Apps on Azure Part 2 where we're going to look at app registration. Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Spring Apps on Azure again. We're going to be doing a second part in our multi-part series on Spring Apps. We're going to be looking at app registration today and how you can use this in code and also what it looks like once we've deployed it to Azure. So app registration on Spring Apps works like it does on any other implementation of a Spring application or in the general concept of app registrations in general. So this would work the same way as if you were running this in a local dev environment, but instead of having to create a Eureka service yourself, you can get that as part of deploying an Azure Spring app, and it's just baked into that offering. So there's nothing that you have to spin up to deploy it. If I was going to be doing this in something like Kubernetes, I would need to bring my own registration server with me, and I would have to create a container that stands in for the registration service, whatever that might be. In this case, it just comes with the app offering, and so I create it, and it's up and running once it's deployed as part of deploying that to Azure. I don't have to do anything extra. So once I have that deployed, then I take my app and I deploy it to Spring Apps on Azure, and it's just going to take advantage of that existing registration service. So the app comes online and as part of its bootstrap process, it notifies the registration service that it is available for consumption. And that means that it's going to have an entry into the registration service that is going to be useful for other services that come online that might want to use that service. So in the instance of app two, it comes online and it might register itself. It might not, just depends on the application. It's gonna register itself with the registration service as well. So if it wants to use the service available in app one, then it needs to go figure out where that is. So it's going to go to the registration service and ask for instances of app one. And so it's just going to request that from the registration service is gonna get back some kind of list and then it's going to pick one of those instances out of that list and then it's going to attempt to connect to that app instance as part of its request. So that could be HTTP request or something like that. In my case, HTTP request. It's going to request something from it at the endpoint provided from the registration service. And then app one is going to return something back to app two and it's going to be whatever is app two is expecting from app one. So it's a very straightforward process and it it does have unique uh, implications in the context of an application, but the uh, actual concept has been around for a very long time and it's been widely used in uh, Spring apps since their inception and it's really no different on Azure. So I'm using Spring Tools with Eclipse for my IDE. So you can see here that I have already loaded my projects here. I have among my projects here, I have Eureka already configured and running in the background. So that's what I'm using for my stand-in for my registration service locally. And so what I have here is just a basic application. It's just an API that I can call. And basically it just takes two strings concatenate, and concatenates them together and returns the results. And I can call this externally. Now I want to consume this from another app. So I'm going to be using the app registration that this one uses. This one's going to start, it's going to register itself with uh, Eureka. And then I'm going to start this one right here, which is the consumer of this app down here. And this one will call into this other service down here when it gets the endpoint from Eureka. So this one is basically just going to get the consumer endpoint in the code. I'm doing it explicitly in the code. You can do this other ways. You can wire it up more, uh, more implicitly and just uh, use some autom automation there. But what I'm doing here is basically I'm just going to uh, call another endpoint. This is another service running in a different uh, context. And it's going to call this method right here. And what this is going to use is the discovery client that's already kind of pre-configured to use uh, Eureka. And it's just going to ask for instances of service. And that's the name of this one down here. And then it's going to create a URI and then it's going to 
uh, request it uh, or get a request from that and return the results. So basically it's going to take uh, whatever was passed in uh, as this parameter and concatenate it to hello. So hello, whatever your name is. So if I put in blaze, it'll say hello blaze or something like that. So it's very basic demonstration here, but it does illustrate what we're going to be doing with registration. So let's go ahead and start this app down here. Let's run this one as a Spring Boot app. And uh, let's start this one up. And uh, uh, once I get this one going, uh, we'll get the other one up and running. And um, then once we have this one up and running, we should be able to um, call it from this one right here. So let's go ahead and start this one right here and start the Spring Boot app. And uh, this one's going to start on a different port. I think it's going to start on port 8082. And then we'll launch a browser and test this. Okay, I've got Chrome open right here. Let's go ahead and make this full sp screen. So let's do HTTP colon slash slash localhost and say hello. I think is the name of my API. You can see where they're where I was testing it already. If I put in slash blaze, it's gonna say hello blaze. If I put in hello Azure, it's gonna put in Azure right there. You can see that's the, the text it's putting out. And that's because it's calling into another service to do the concatenation, but then it gets the results of that service and returns it back through this service. But it got the endpoint by way of calling into uh, Eureka to get that endpoint uh, as the app registration. So if we wanted to look at Eureka, we can look at that on 8761 and uh, look at what that is actually uh, putting out right here. So we should see two app registrations right here. So we have service and service consumer. Uh, this is just the endpoint for that. And uh, this is the endpoint for the other one. So again, very straightforward, nothing real fancy here. It's just registration uh, from those applications. Once I started them, it's just part of their bootstrap process. They say, I'm here, Eureka, here's my endpoint. And then Eureka then can send that out to anybody that wants to use it. This is how the actual registration service on Spring Apps is gonna work on Azure the exact same way, but I don't have to deploy Eureka. And that's go, That's what we're gonna do uh, now is we're gonna take both of these apps to deploy them to our instance of apps on Azure, and then we'll be able to see these two working in the exact same way we see here, except I don't have to have Eureka in the mix. So I have here my applications already deployed into my Spring apps on Azure. So this was Eureka that we looked at just a moment ago. Now I have taken those and deployed these into Spring apps on Azure. You can see that I have registration status right here as one of one. Now I, I'm not gonna go through how to do that part of uploading the application. I have a link in the video description below if you wanna check out how to do that. I did that in part one of this video series. But once you have your apps uploaded, they work exactly the same way. I didn't have to deploy Eureka in this context though, because it's just part of Spring Apps on Azure. So here's my, my service uh, that I have running. This is the one that basically just takes those two strings and concatenates them together. So if I open this up and I just do concat like this, I do concat and I do A and B, um, I should get the, um, the two strings concatenated together. If I actually could spell right, concat right that. You see that I had just get A and B right there. If I put in blaze and then i put in stewart i'm going to get blaze stewart right like that so uh if i want to call that from my other service then basically what i need to do is go and load its endpoint which is going to be over here inside of this consumer app right here so this is the other endpoint that's going to call into this one but it's going to get the endpoint for this app from the registration service. So let's go ahead and load this one up. This is my consumer. So if I say, say hello, and I put in blaze, I should get hello blaze just like we did before. And that's because it's passing in hello and then it's concatenating with whatever you put in for your name. If I put in blaze Stuart uh, for the, the full name there, I, I'll get back that concatenation like that. It's not doing anything fancy, but it is getting the endpoint for the concat service from uh, the registration service on Spring Apps. So it's basically the extended replacement for Eureka if you're running this in the local context. So again, very straightforward, not hard to do on Azure, but it gets you the ability to have registrations on Azure without having to bring a lot of that infrastructure with you. If you like this content, please consider checking us out online at www.winelect.com where you can find several blog entries about topics related to Microsoft Azure and software development. And you can also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new content becomes available. Until next time, thanks.